you're worried in case you find yourself in the middle of nowhere and you turn into the dog. A bit. With no one like me around to help you. That's what's worrying you, isn't it? I suppose so. And worse, what happens if you turn back into the boy and find yourself naked with everyone looking at you and saying, what's that idiot doing standing there with no clothes on? Highly embarrassing. If it was me, I'd be terrified. Well, I certainly am now. Oh. Hello, Mr Thomas. Oh. All set, are we? Yes, miss. I hope that's not a sweet, Hobson. <coughs> no, miss. It may be only four days, but we're going to imagine what life must be like without wall-to-wall -wall television, computer games and chocolate bars. We're going to experience something completely new to you, Hobson. It's called fresh air and exercise. And sweets are totally forbidden. Do you understand? Yes, miss. Sorry, miss. Right. Let's be off then, shall we? Bye, Grandpa. Goodbye, boy. What's got into Hobson, I wonder? Why? He smiled at me and said, good morning, Mrs. Jessup. Really? Mm. And when I told him off about eating sweets, he said sorry. Hobson said sorry? He's up to something. Oh, I see. There you are, Rex. Rex, you should have told me. Sorry, miss. You should have come to see me. What about when you... Michael told me about your headache. You shouldn't be up here on your own. Sorry, miss. Miss? Yes, Rex. While I was up here, with my headache, I saw a bear. <laughs> a bear? Yes, miss. I don't think so, Rex. There aren't any bears in this country. Perhaps it was a squirrel. That's what I said, miss. No, miss, honestly. It was in Hobson's tent. It had been eating chocolate. Chocolate? Hobson? Over here. Mm. Hobson, what says I hear about you having chocolate in your tent? Me, miss? Yes, apparently there was a squirrel eating chocolate in your tent. It wasn't a squirrel, miss. You're not allowed sweets on camp, you know that. I haven't got any, miss. Someone's eaten them. Well, serves you right. Now, I'd like you to run twice down to the lake and back. The rest of you, we've got half an hour before lunch. I'd like you all to spread out and gather wood for tonight. Off you go, Hobson. <laughs> and run, Hobson. <laughs> I'm worried it might hurt someone, miss. They kill people that take their food, you know. No, Rex. A nasty little bite if you disturb them on the bird table, perhaps. So I don't think they'd actually kill anyone. You don't think he did see anything, do you? Who? Rex. You mean like a bear? I don't think so. I mean, something could have escaped. It's highly unlikely, I think. Rex is a very sensible child. He's not normally given to making up stories. No, that's true. And I just wondered, why don't you give the police a ring then? Do you think so? Well, they should know if something's escaped. Yes. We could walk into the village after we finish this, while they're eating. It'd be an excuse to have half an hour's peace. Mr Livingstone could keep an eye on the children. I must say, I couldn't look at another spam fritter. <sighs> <laughs> I think Rex may have been right. There is an escape there after all. They just didn't think it was headed in this direction. Uh, you better round up all the children and get them in the big tent. OK. What's that? The children were making a bear trap. That's before we knew there was a real one. Well, I think it might be a good idea to get it down. If the bear did happen to stumble into that, it could just make it very angry. What are you doing here? This is not at all funny, Mrs. Jessup. Who is this person? It's my grandfather. <laughs> They're going to give me a lift back to my tent. Now, I want you to make sure that you've always got a rucksack with spare clothes for him, no matter where you go. All right? Now, I wonder if you'd be kind of go and get some uh, bags that I've left behind. You'll find them marked on this map. Will do, Mr Thomas. If you'd rather, they can give you a lift home. I'll get the boys to collect your things in the morning, if that's a good idea. Well, thank you, Mrs Jessup. Thank you.
Thank you.